Justin Flory, and I work at the Rochester Institute of Technology as part of the Libre Corps program, where we do open source community consulting with humanitarian and nonprofit organizations. I'm here on behalf of my colleague, who unfortunately could not be here for the presentation, Cecilia Shapiro, to talk a little bit about emerging tech open source scoring system, or some of the work that we do at the UNICEF Office of Innovation. And it would be awesome if you could give her some social media love. Since she's not here today, she would really appreciate that too. So let's talk a little bit about the background of what we do. So the UNICEF Venture Fund is a $20 million pooled fund that invests in early stage, open source, emerging technology with the potential to impact children on a global scale. It also provides product and technology assistance, support with business growth, and access to a global network of experts and partners. The UNICEF Venture Fund is the first financial vehicle of its kind in the United Nations and also enables UNICEF to learn from and shape markets of emerging technology. So the UNICEF Venture Fund is also one that exists at the intersection of $100 billion business markets and over 1 billion people's needs. Oops. So a little bit about what the Venture Fund does in action. It was founded in 2016 to make equity-free investments in open source technology startups in developing and emerging economies that have potential to solve some of the most pressing challenges that are faced in those, in those countries facing children. It also invests in UNICEF's country offices that test and develop emerging technology solutions for children. And the fund allows UNICEF to take small risks within particular technology portfolios and ensures that even if many of the investments fail, the portfolio is still a success. Uh, and the Venture Fund invests in solutions that benefit from a small 50K to 100K uh, seed financial investment to significantly, significantly impact their ability to move to the next level of development. To give an idea of the context that we work in, we have over 76 investments across 39 countries that mostly span the global south, as we know it. So a little bit about where this all ties into the, the metrics conversation. So because the Innovation Fund is a seed investor, we take some risks on a number of companies and we measure how successful they are with a number of metrics, something you are all probably familiar with. Uh, for one showing success, we want to connect them with UNICEF partners and country offices around the world to expand their solutions to a larger market. To do this, the UNICEF Office of Innovation uh, uses a set of metrics to help us understand successful investments in open source solutions, specifically in emerging technology. To give an example of some of the portfolios that we've worked off of the past year, um, blockchain, virtual reality, and augmented reality, uh, data science, and coming soon, a drones cohort. So currently we measure across two types of key performance indicators, or KPIs, on technology and business sustainability. So in the technology KPIs, some of the things that we've been looking with, or that UNICEF has really been looking at to help understand the sustainability of the technology solutions that they look at is the GitHub activity, the code activity around stars, forks, commits, all of the things that we've been looking at in Grimoire. We also look at test coverage around things of whether CI test coverage exists, the unit tests are written for the project. We also look at whether there's an open source license that is approved fits under the mandate of the standard open source definition. We also look at data such as the number of users that have actually had hands-on experience testing the product in either local country offices or somewhere else in the field. And we've also, they've also evaluated on prototype readiness. A little bit on the business sustainability KPIs. They look around a, the percent of profit margin for the organizations revenue generation, third-party funding, and the amount and number of funders, the, 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 comp the composition of the team, both around diversity and also skill sets, and also the number of users. And sometimes the teams are coming into the fund 
with either uh, an early stage solution they've already been working on that they're looking to push forward. So sometimes they do come with already a few users in hand. So to give an idea of what the system that we're using right now looks like, if we track a number of those metrics, the KPIs that I just talked about earlier, and we assign scores to help people across the, across the UNICEF Office of Innovation understand where our portfolio companies stand. So to give an idea, we currently we use some of this going back to the Twitter talk. There's some probably some cool stuff that we could learn to push forward our conversation to come up with ways to automate and better share the work that we're doing and the metrics we're also collecting. And we use some of the visualizations from the metrics we collect to this is used internally for conversations about our startups and also to do some outreach work starting with ChaosCon. So what are the next steps for where we're trying to drive all of this? So first, we want to continue evolving the metrics that are collected currently by the UNICEF portfolio companies. One of the reasons why we wanted to come here at ChaosCon was that we wanted to learn from what the rest of the community is doing and what areas they're looking at to try to improve the way that we are studying and understanding the open source projects in emerging tech. Additionally, we also want to keep testing the relevance of the KPIs we're collecting already by looking at a wider set of projects beyond what we're just looking at in the UNICEF Innovation Fund. And lastly, we want to automate the collection process of this, hopefully with tools like Grimoire. And this is one area that we're very interested in looking to collaborate further with people outside of the UN and outside of UNICEF. This is something that has been worked on in kind of a little bit of an isolated bubble for a long time. And the momentum is starting to shift now because we realize this isn't something that UNICEF can do by its, own, by its own. It's not something that can be done in isolation. So we're looking for opportunities to learn from others and also contribute some of our knowledge and experience with what we're working on with the wider community. That was a very high level recap of the UNICEF Innovation Fund, but if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to take them. I'd like to, I'd like to take them. Thank you. Eleven minutes. So we got lots of time for questions if anyone wants to ask them. How many projects have been funded so far? Seventy-six projects, to my knowledge, and that was that was this infographic we had earlier up here. So, or seventy-six. I'm sorry, across thirty-nine different countries. What's a typical type of projects you guys have funded? So. UNICEF works on different areas. This is part of the digital public's good strategy that UNICEF is behind. I'm not super well versed on this, so I only work as an external consultant to UNICEF, but the projects they fund are on specific sets of portfolios. Like I mentioned earlier, some of those have been companies that are working on new blockchain solutions or working with virtual reality and augmented reality, data science, and the upcoming one with drones. And some of that, like for example, with uh, augmented virtual reality, that's also been a great opportunity for us to work with organizations that are doing educational content. So that's where we've been able to introduce things like Creative Commons licenses for you know, the games that they're working on. So the content that's being shared is also a freely licensed resource as well. Yeah. Well, hi, on the uh, subject of automation, I was wondering how much of your metrics are currently automated and how many have been identified as either automatable or non-automatable. So the question was how many of our metrics that we have are currently automated and or have been evaluated to be automatable. I'll be honest, a lot of what we're doing is currently done through a mixture of Excel spreadsheets and other black hat wizardry. But this is one of the things that by coming here, we really want to start looking more widely at ways that we can be smarter with the way that we spend our time on this and not start from the ground, from ground zero. The ground up. Ground up. <laughs> ground zero sounds more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, comments, concerns? In the back. Uh, I wonder how you make the connection between the two sets. The at two the sets? End, at the very end, you need to analyze it as a whole. And I mean, it's not, it's not different from what it happens to us in, inside companies, right? Uh, you have the technology or the community health metrics, and then you have the business one. And that connection is the real holy grail thing. We, 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 talk, we heard before about page views. I mean, depending on what kind of services or products you have, 
you can find strategies to make that feedback loop very simple, but depending on the products you sell, that's very, very hard. So I'm always interested in the connection between technical or community-based metrics and business ones. And you, you put there clearly two sets, and I wonder how you try to connect those, or the implications of, or how, you, how the evolution, I mean, I assume you measure them over time, and how you make a, a, a direct connection between them. So the question was looking at the two sets of metrics, both technology and business sustainability, how do we connect those two together for how we evaluate the success of our portfolio companies? So it's a fantastic question, and it's one that honestly I think would be better answered by my colleague Cecilia Shapiro, but I'll try to give you my perspective on it just as an individual, not as part of UNICEF. I think that a large part of this comes down to communication and messaging in terms of how you deliver these messages to internal and external stakeholders. Like we heard a little bit in the previous talk about having your internal and external metrics. I think it's not just about numbers exclusively, but also the way that we communicate that value to our organization. So it's not exactly, probably not the answer you were looking for, but I think it's something that's actually not as much of a quantitative approach as it is a qualitative approach and how, how we talk about those metrics and how we look at sharing them with others. Any other questions? Have there been any surprising stories or any success stories around how you use the metrics to help those projects? So this has been part of what, once I was kind of uh, embedded in the team, I started to learn a little bit about how they've been collecting these metrics so far. And part of the work that I do as a consultant at RIT and through the Libre Corps program is we work with UNICEF on understanding what healthy open source looks like. So for some context, what we do at the Libre Corps program at RIT is we work with humanitarian and nonprofit organizations that want to commit, make a bigger commitment to open source in their organization. So we started working with UNICEF two years ago, and they came to us with two challenges for their, their organization. It was one, for the companies they are onboarding and, and bringing into the fund, they need help to actually provide men direct mentorship to these teams who are trying to figure this all out for the first time. Very few of them have even, a, you know, a lot of them are coming from these developing nations that don't have a, really an established technology portfolio or active technology community. So I think we have to take it from a different perspective. We have to help coach them and bring them into the open source community and set up their projects to be more sustainable from the beginning. The second piece that they, that they came to us with is they were like, we know we like, we really want to do open source, but we don't fully understand what is a good project or what's a bad project. We think we know, but we don't really, like, we'd love to, like, get a deeper analysis on that. So the metrics piece has kind of been from the last two years, we have, like, a, a more of a qualitative set of tools that we use. There's an opensource.com article about how the Libre Corps program uses a set of a rubric, we have a rubric and a milestone roadmap tool that we share with our teams. So the rubric is another Excel spreadsheet, but it's all about the, a lot of the soft things that are harder to measure. And that's one thing that we'd like to push forward into the metrics conversation. I guess actually, if the internet will be kind to me, I can try to actually show the rubric. Oh, um, let's see. Yes. So we look at things like documentation, which we include like a code of conduct, contributing guidelines, developer documentation, readmes. Uh, we also look at user documentation uh, and like five different other categories, project management, which includes things like a project board, project discussion. And I'm just gonna, if you want to find all of these resources, they are all out there and published in this opensource.com article, if you want to find some of those resources. To bring it back to your question, this is where I would really like, from my perspective, UNICEF has been doing some of these metrics on their own, figuring it out. I'd like to push the conversation forward to see how can we automate the things we are already tracking through that the model that I presented on in the presentation. But I'd also like to see how can we move some of these things that we're evaluating on 
that are really hard to measure. Like some of the community ones at the bottom, there's a whole section on outreach and how you engage with your community in a healthy, sustainable way. So I don't have a clear answer, maybe a story to tell, but I have ideas of where I want to start telling the story. Perfect, thank you. How are we on time? We are, you still have three minutes. <laughs> Last questions, three minutes. All right, thank, thank you, you so much.